first up we have the integral of 5x cubed times x squared plus 1. Now this is not one of those where you use a reverse chain rule. This thing is not the derivative of the inside. You can't just go straight there. It is the product, but if you start trying to use by parts, if you set this equal to u, so simplify the u dash, then you suddenly got to integrate that, which is possible. It's a, you get like a awkward trig answer, but then you have to integrate that from there. It's just no way is that going to be the best route. I'm not sure if it's going to work out even. If you do this as u and this is uh, v dash, then the v is going to get more complicated. So what this is kind of tending towards is a substitution. Let's try and simplify this thing inside the root, see what happens. You can do that by letting u equal x squared plus 1. So then du by dx is going to be 2x. All right. So what happens? This becomes 5x cubed. I'm going to leave this, uh, I'll write it as root u for the moment, and then I can write dx by du du. You might alternatively be somebody who likes to make dx the subject. It can be du over 2x, but I prefer to do it this way. This is going to become 1 over 2x. It's the same, you get to the same place. All right. So let's just tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to have 5 over 2 x squared because the x cubed is going to cancel partially with the x. And then u to the half du. I can't do anything with this yet because I've still got x's and u's. But what I can do now, because this is the reason this has worked really well, I've now, I can now just replace x squared by u minus 1. I'm not going to get any awkward square roots or anything. So it's going to be the integral of 5 over 2 u minus 1 times u to the half. So 5 over 2 u to the 3 over 2 minus 5 over 2 u to the half. Okay, this is, this is manageable now. Brilliant. So I'm going to increase the power by 1 and divide by that new power. It's going to be 2 over 5. So actually they're going to cancel. I'm just left with u to the 5 over 2. And over here, increase the power by 1 and times 5 over 2 by 2 thirds. So the 2's cancel. Got my plus c. And I'm nearly there. I can now get, I've got, remember, u is equal to x squared plus 1. So it's going to be x squared plus 1 to the 5 over 2 minus 5 over 3 x squared plus 1 to the 3 over 2 plus c. Okay, nice. So now for part b, we're asked to find this integral. Okay, and this is definitely looking like a biparts one because we have something that we can easily differentiate. That can be our u, and then something that we can integrate. It's a little bit awkward, but it, it's going to check out. I mean, it's basically our only option. So u dash is going to be 1. And then v, okay, v is going to be the integral of tan squared theta. Now this is actually a little bit awkward and it probably relies on you, you know, haven't seen something like this before, haven't, like haven't studied how to integrate tan squared theta because there's a very specific way and it's to write it using your trig identities in terms of sec squared. So I can never remember the exact identity, I always just derive it from scratch just I don't want to get the plus or the minus the wrong way around but I know that sine squared plus cos squared is 1 and then if I divide through by cos squared I'm going to get tan squared plus 1 is sec squared. So that means that v is actually going to become the integral of sec squared theta minus 1. 
So you might have been able to go straight there. Fair play if you can. And the reason we do this is that actually the integral of sec squared theta is just tan theta. That one is in the formula book, or at least the derivative is. When you do the derivative of tan theta, you get sec squared, so it works in reverse as well. It's also worth knowing, to be honest, but it is given. So minus theta, and then we've got a plus C, but of course we, we ignore that. So then our integral is going to be uv minus the integral. Again, this is also given the formula book. Integration by parts. Now we can start putting it in. So u is theta and v is tan theta minus theta. And then I'm doing the integral of one times tan theta minus theta. So theta, I'll expand the brackets, I think. Now, the integral of tan theta is actually given to us in the question, so I'm just going to go straight there. So it's going to be ln sec theta. I'll talk about where that comes from in a minute. And then it's going to be plus the integral of theta, so it's going to be plus a half theta squared, and then plus c. So we're pretty much there. Let's tidy it up. So theta, tan theta, minus ln, sec theta. And I've got a minus theta squared plus a half theta squared, so it's going to become minus a half theta squared plus c. Okay, nice integral. So just to finish, let me show you where the integral of tan theta comes from. In case you know, you're know you interested or you might be at it in the time. So we write it as sine theta over cos theta. And it's nearly in the form f dash x over f of x. But when you differentiate cos x, you actually get minus sine. So I'm just going to stick a minus there and then a minus outside. So then it becomes minus ln of f of x, or in this case, cos theta. I've kind of, I've only just sort of briefly talked about it, but it's this integral here equals ln of f of x. It's reverse chain rule because when you differentiate this thing, you get 1 over f of x. That's um, differentiating the outside and then you times by the derivative f dash x. Hence, you get f dash x over f of x. And the minus, we can actually raise because theta to the power of minus 1, which is where the sec comes from. Just explaining that result, even though it's given to us, I think it's nice to do that. Right, good set of integrals here. Yeah, not not easy, easy to slip up on them, but there we go, got them completed.